Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. I saw a recent comment on the video about false apostle Catherine Crick. The comment said to read 1 Timothy 2.12 in the Passion Version. So I thought, strange, what does that version say? Let's first look at what other versions say. And we're going to focus on some key words here. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. Next, I do not let women teach men. I do not permit a woman to teach. And the rest are pretty much the same. Key understanding is that women in general are not allowed to teach or have authority over a man in the church. And please remember, this is nothing against women. We are just doing a proper exegesis for this verse. If we look at a bunch more versions, they also translate the same. Even the Aramaic translation says the same, and that's important because Brian Simmons says that he used the Aramaic when translating into the Passion Version. The Passion Translation says, I don't advocate that the newly converted women be the teachers in the church, assuming authority over the men, but to live in peace. Key words here, advocate, newly converted, and live in peace. Only the Passion Translation says advocate, which is to recommend, when all other versions say it's not allowed. Only the Passion says newly converted women, when all other versions refer to women in general. So this allows them to train women, and then they are no longer newly converted and qualify scripturally, as long as you're only using the Passion mistranslation. And finally, the Passion says, live in peace, when all other versions say, be silent. Two totally different meanings. Brian Simmons has totally changed and added to God's holy word. And that's a big no-no. And just one more reason to stay away from this crowd. But this allows them to take people like Jenna Winston, train them in the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministries, and appoint her as a lead pastor. Now, since this is a shorter video, I'm going to also attach the video, Can Women Be Pastors? And if you haven't seen that yet, then keep on watching. I'll also include a link to the number one reason not to use the Passion Translation, and you can hear Brian Simmons say some horrendous things. There's a lot of talk about Beth Moore leaving the Southern Baptist Church lately, but that's not the real issue people are addressing. This seems to come back to the hotly debated question of whether women should be pastors over a church. The most important thing to remember is that this is not a male versus female issue. It's about what God says on this topic. On the surface, I would say, does it really matter who's teaching as long as it's accurate, spirit-led teaching? But God's word says something different. One of the most common used verses is 1 Timothy 2, 11 to 12, that says a woman must quietly receive instruction and that they are not to teach or exercise authority over a man. The verse continues to tell us why. Because Adam was formed first and that the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Some will argue about the context of this and the culture at the time it was written to justify that women pastors are okay. Using the reason that women were typically uneducated at that time, but now it's much different. But there is no mention of education in Timothy. And if education was a qualification for ministry, then most of Jesus' disciples wouldn't have been qualified. But this isn't the only verse on this topic. If we look at the qualification for an overseer or a leader, which a pastor is one of those roles, we see in 1 Timothy 3 that it starts off by saying, if a man desires. Now, that's interesting in itself because when we look at the Greek, we see that it's not translated as man, but as anyone. We can see this clearer here that it can mean anyone or a certain one. But if we go back to the Greek voice, we see that it's a nominative masculine singular voice which could also be why we see some translations use the word man rather than anyone. We also notice that even though it says anyone, the Greek does say he later on in the same sentence. But the sentence that makes this as clear as day is that he must be the husband of one wife. So this gives it even more support and there's no confusion in the Greek on this either. We see the same terminology used for deacons as well, husbands and wives. Titus 1 also speaks of elder qualifications and uses the term husband of one wife. 
Some use the examples of Priscilla and Phoebe and how they were used in the New Testament, but there is no actual verse that says they were a pastor or a leader over men in a church. Women in the church are not restricted from public prayer or prophesying, only from having spiritual teaching authority over men. Women, just as much as men, are called to minister to others, to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and to proclaim the gospel to the lost. And women are encouraged to teach other women in Titus 2. So, back to the original question. Can women be lead pastors of a church? I think the Bible is clear and the answer is no. But maybe you have some thoughts of your own. So, as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.